Uh, so today, uh, I'm just going to briefly introduce ITS Partners and what we do. I'm going to cover mobile management and security strategies and products of what Symantec offers in the market today. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, specific features uh, on mobile management and security uh, and the App Center. Um, I won't spend a whole lot of time on slides. Uh, I'll actually show you the console and some devices and uh, give you an idea of the you know how everything works behind the scenes. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, BYOD strategies for bring your own devices um, and how you know, that plays out in the enterprise. And finally, uh, I'll give you a tour of some of the products uh, that fit into the strategies we'll be discussing today. So a little bit about ITS. Uh, we're a uh, professional services company. Semantic is all we do. Uh, we specialize in Altiris and Service Desk uh, workflow and also with the uh, other security products uh, such as SET, uh, and also with um, and DLP, and also with identity and information protection, uh, so that would include uh, VIP as well. Uh, we're engineer centric. Uh, what that means is, uh, you know, most of our staff are engineers who are out every week uh, doing consulting on these semantic products, uh, and we all share, uh, you know, information amongst each other uh, to, you know, implement best practices for your organization. Uh, we've been partner of the year uh, for a few years now. Um, we're generally recognized as the leader in implementing endpoint management solutions. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, your mobile strategy. Um, there's you know, different ways to approach it uh, depending on you know what types of you know employees and devices you have in your organization, and um, you know how tightly you need to manage them. Uh, it's going to depend on you know the industry. Uh, that you're in, you know, whether you're healthcare or you know financial or you know higher ed, you know things like that. So in the lower left hand side here, um, you know we have a company owned device um, that's also managed. Uh, so this is your typical you know and mobile device management implementation. Um, on the right side, we have personally owned devices, uh, you know that are still fully managed um, by your organization. Uh, but the device isn't necessarily owned um, by the company. On the upper right hand side there, we have uh, personal devices that aren't necessarily managed, at least in the device management capacity. Uh, so what that means is you may be managing the information and applications on there, but you won't be taking full control of the device over. And in the upper left hand side there, we have uh, unmanaged devices that are company owned. Um, you know, on the, on the workstation side, that would be equivalent to having, you know, laptops and desktops uh, with no systems, ma systems management solution uh, but being owned by the company. And that's a place you really don't want to be in uh, because you, you're carrying all the risk, you know, of having uh, corporate assets with, you know, corporate data um, and content on there, um, but not having any control over how it's being used or distributed. So, you know, going back to managed devices that are company owned, this is the most typical situation today. Uh, there's different ways of, you know, controlling or locking down uh, the information and applications on the device. Uh, the first being, um, you know, requiring strong authentication. Uh, so that could be, you know, two-factor authentication uh, and access to not just the device, but more importantly to, you know, corporate resources, uh, you know, such as, you know, VPN or Wi-Fi. Uh, intranet sites, that kind of thing. Uh, protecting the information on the device, um, that's going to be looking at the actual data that's residing on there, making sure it's encrypted, making sure it's not getting leaked uh, through emails or through Dropbox or you know means like that. Uh, being able to manage the device and the security within the within the device and which applications are going on there uh, is also a key part of managing the overall device. And finally, uh, distributing applications and you know collaboration. Um, you know, phones started out as you know the tool for you know social needs, being able to make calls and such. Um, just because we've added data plans on that hasn't you know hasn't really changed that. Uh, people are still collaborating, you know, sending files, photos, uh, documents. They're working on the go. They're editing these documents, and generally these documents aren't going to just stay on the device. Uh, they're going to be sent up through email. You know, or through Dropbox or some other you know, means of sharing that. So we need to be able to manage that, 
uh, and reduce our risk in the ways we share that information. Okay. So here's, here's how we're going to do all this. Um, Symantec provides a broad portfolio of products um, within the mobile arena. And all these are here to address these different needs. So for authentication and access, uh, we have VIP for cloud-based authentication. Um, ma Manage PKI is going to provide you that cloud-based uh, PKI environment for certificates. And O3 um, is another product that allows you to uh, basically manage your authentication and your accounts not just on your own network, but also on cloud um, and different you know services out in the cloud, uh, such as you know LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, etc. So managing the information on the device, um, we'll be focusing on these today. Uh, the first DLP being data loss prevention. Uh, that's basically looking at the data that's flowing, um, you know, from the device to other, um, you know, to other networks or to other servers. Um, so you know, a good example of that is, you know, a lot of people focus on locking down, you know, email, locking down documents on the device, um, but the device isn't your only endpoint. You know, you still have laptops and workstations, um, and people can still email documents uh, containing sensitive information willingly, you know, knowingly or unknowingly um, to untrusted, you know, uh, destinations. And so DLP is going to be able to look at that content that's flowing between these different devices, um, you know, so not just looking at mobile devices and to determine if it's sensitive, whether it should be blocked or reported on, et cetera. So DLP is more of a, um, more of a high level view of all the content, not just mobile devices. The App Center, um, it, watch, I'll actually demonstrate later on in this presentation, um, that's going to be managing the, the content and the, um, data within your applications on the device. So under device control management, this is what makes the uh, device you know, fully managed by your company. Um, so MDM, you know, this is going to apply to all of your major OS platforms, you know, Apple, um, iOS, Windows Mobile, Windows Phone, Blackberry, Android, uh, etc. Mobile security is going to be more specific um, to the security features on the device that won't really come native to the OS. Uh, so a good example of that would be you know, blacklisting, whitelisting applications, running anti-malware scans, et cetera. Uh, think of that as you know, semantic endpoint protection, but for mobile. And finally, for application distribution collaboration, um, we have the App Center, uh, which is going to be used to you know, distribute documents and content to your devices in a secure manner. And Norton Zone uh, is going to provide that mechanism for people to securely uh, share files and other content with other people. So it's going to provide that collaboration piece um, in a much more secure manner than Dropbox or Box.net. So again, this lower left-hand side is you know, a fully managed device owned by your company. On the upper right-hand side, almost you know, diagonal or you know, polar opposite of this is you have you know, unmanaged devices that are personally owned. So the way we tackle that um, is, you know, we can either take an app-centric approach, so looking at the content and data within the application itself, or we can take a device-centric approach and, you know, treat the device um, as an environment as a whole, rather than looking at the specific applications, or a mix of both. Um, so, you know, if we're looking at it from a device-managed perspective, even if it's personally owned, all the same products I just talked about are going to apply the same there because it's still it's still you know being managed at the device level. Okay, uh, but for BYOD, um, you may not want to manage the whole device. Uh, employees, you know, or your staff may not feel comfortable uh, knowing you know all the applications that are installed on there um, or being able to you know block uh, iTunes App Store or you know turn off the camera or, or things like that. So some of these you know MDM functionality. Um, may not be appropriate uh, for, for, for fully owned personal devices. So for those devices, um, you still want to control the access to your network. So we can do that through that two-factor authentication provided through VIP uh, or through O3, you're know, managing the authentication uh, to your cloud services. Uh, the App Center is going to focus on 
you know, apps that you've developed in-house uh, or external, you know, public-facing apps. Uh, so again, it's very focused on the content, you know, within your corporate apps. Um, and then also being able to distribute, you know, recommended apps, in-house apps, and collaborating uh, with content, you know, produced within the workplace. All, all of that information is very pertinent to your organization, um, but you don't necessarily have to manage the whole device uh, to accomplish the security goals. And all these together make up the semantic portfolio of mobile products. Okay. Uh, this is just another way of looking at um, you know, wh everything I just described. So we're actually going to be focusing on three products today. Uh, I've highlighted those in blue. Uh, mobile management is going to provide us our core MDM functionality. Mobile security is specific to Android, but it's going to provide us that augmented uh, you know, security analysis and protection of the device. And finally, um, the uh, Semantic App Center, uh, formerly known as Nikona, uh, is going to provide us that protection specific to applications and content uh, within those apps. So we're going to start with um, Semantic Mobile Management. So th you know, the first thing that you need to um, look at in any MDM application is you know, how does the device become managed? Uh, how does it become registered you know, on the server? Uh, and with uh, semantic mobile management, we actually have two ways of doing that. Uh, the first one is anyone can just download the application from the uh, public app store. Uh, so for BYOD devices, you know, this is very easy because everyone has access to the Apple app store. Um, if, this is, if this is an Android device, uh, it would be from the Google Play store. So uh, same thing for Windows Phone, you know, from the Windows market. Uh, so this is the public side of that agent. Anyone can download it. They punch in the server address. Uh, if you require authentication, they put that in, and they get enrolled. Um, for iOS, we have what's called an in-house agent. Uh, what that means is you distribute that agent yourself. You can put it on a website or in an email, and you can customize and brand it. So you can put your organization logo on it. You can change the color scheme, the look and feel. Uh, you can also... Um, you know, change the wording or whatever, so you can really customize it, um, you know, to fit your organization's, um, you know, image. If you have any branding standards, and the reason why you'd want to do that is because this agent um, is going to be providing your enterprise app store, so it's going to contain all of your apps and documents that you're pushing out to your users. Um, so if you already have, you know, portals, um, you know, on your internet uh, or in, or internally, you can make this blend and match that as well. Uh, another nice bonus for using the in-house agent uh, is that you, you know we're not as restricted um, with Apple guidelines for having apps published in the store. Uh, Apple's pretty strict on what you can and cannot do with applications in the App Store. So when you're distributing the agent in-house, that means uh, we can have the agent run it in the background, you know, on the iPad or iPhone, uh, and have it check in on an interval that you specify. Uh, so it can do some things. Um, you know, like reporting in GPS location in the background. So it can do things that, you know, the App Store uh, may not let you do. So within the agent, um, you, know, you can distribute applications. So these could be in-house in or internal applications uh, that you or your organization has written um, or things that you may have had, you know, a third party uh, develop for you. Uh, you can also distribute public applications. Uh, so, you know, things from the App Store or from Google Play. Uh, so these would be things that you recommend. And you can even flag them you know, as recommended or required. Uh, if you do required, it'll actually pop up on the device telling them you need to install it. Um, and you can also target uh, different groups of applications and documents to different devices. So for instance, if you had a group of HR devices and a group of sales devices, uh, you know, they may require different apps. Um, so, you know, the sales devices may want the Salesforce app, uh, and the HR uh, devices may want, you know, an Oracle app. Uh, so you can target different groups of, you know, uh, documents and apps to uh, different devices. Um, if you have multiple languages in your organization, um, you can also target by language as well. On the Android side, uh, there's a Exchange or Active Sync client out there called Touchdown by Nitrodesk. Um, that's now it can be fully managed from mobile management. 
Uh, and so what that gives you is a secure container uh, for email, calendar, and contacts. Uh, so you can fully manage uh, you know, what your users can and cannot do uh, with your corporate email and calendar. Um, and regardless, you know, if this is on Android or iOS or whatever, any of these, you know, uh, email profiles or Wi-Fi profiles or VPN uh, profiles that you're sending down, um, you maintain control over that. So if your employee uh, leaves the organization, um, you can pull back all that data, all those documents that you sent down. And we call that a selective wipe. I'll explain more about that in the next slide. Um, so configuration management. This allows you to provision settings uh, to your devices. Uh, most of them are most of them are in iOS at the moment because so they've done the best job standardizing um, on these configurations. Um, but you know, traditionally you've had to produce a document um, you know, with instructions that tell employees, okay, this is how you get on our Wi-Fi network, or this is how you connect a VPN. And then they have to fill in all those settings. Well, now you can predefine all those settings for them. So it's only asking them for their password and everything else is predefined. So it really reduces the risk of you know, human error in entering the settings and you can reduce help desk calls that way as well. Okay. So moving on to security and compliance, uh, you know, this is the second aspect of uh, mobile device management. Uh, being able to you know, set security policies that match your corporate policy. Uh, not everyone already has you know, security policies in place for the mobile devices. Uh, so if you don't, you'll probably want to get one uh, as soon as possible. But whatever you decide to do, whatever you know, um, meets the needs of your organization the best, uh, you can configure through mobile management. So if you have a certain you know, requirement for a complexity of a passcode, how often it should expire, uh, how often the device should lock, uh, things like that, you can enforce that through mobile management. Um, if you have a group of devices uh, they're maybe in like a kiosk uh, situation, you know, so they may be in a retail store viewable by the public uh, or they could be shared or passed among mul multiple users. Uh, you could also lock down other aspects of the device such as, you know, installing applications or running Safari uh, or using the camera, things like that. Uh, you can control all these from the single console. Um, I mentioned, you know, being able to remove just the corporate data. We call that the uh, selective wipe. Um, you also have an option to do a full wipe, which basically sends the device back to you know, factory defaults out of the box. Um, being able to you know, enforce compliance standards. Um, so if you have a security policy that says uh, you know, no one should be jailbreaking or rooting their device, um, then what you can do is uh, ensure that people are following that uh, because if they do you know, jailbreak or root their device or you know, turn off their passcode or something like that, um, you can then you know, revoke or pull back some of the privileges that you've granted them. Uh, so a good example of that is uh, you might set up your VPN policy to say, you know, only users who do not have jailbroken devices can connect to VPN. So if they jailbreak the device, uh, the VPN profile gets automatically pulled by the server and they can no longer access your network because their device has been deemed uh, to not be in compliance. Uh, if you have data loss prevention <clears throat> set up on, um, in your environment already, uh, there is a DLP for tablets uh, that can plug in and ensure that the tablet is working through your DLP policies. So there's a lot of integration you know, with your existing security policies on the mobile side. If you have a PKI environment set up, um, you know, if you have a Microsoft PKI or VeriSign Managed PKI, uh, we can integrate with both of those. Um, this allows you to use certificates to connect to Exchange, uh, VPN, or Wi-Fi, uh, or any other application that requires it. <clears throat> so consolidated management, um, this is really getting into the differentiator of what makes you know, semantic mobile management better than the rest. Um, Everything is consolidated into one platform, one console. Um, if you already have all tiers in your environment, this is a great fit. It's just a, it's another installation from the uh, Semantic Installation Manager. Um, if you have SCCM in your environment and you're using that, um, there's a very similar version of this mobile management with the same functionality uh, that hooks directly into SCCM. So if you have either of those platforms, 
uh, this hooks in directly and makes a great extension uh, to what you already have. Um, so working within those consoles, you, know, you have one place to do all your reporting and alerts. Um, so there's about, I want to say around 20 to 30 built-in reports um, on devices, but you can customize or create your own reports to show you whatever data you need to. And those reports are collecting data about the device itself, the applications installed on it, and users who are using those devices. If you want to create you know, alerts or notifications uh, based on those reports, uh, you can easily do that within the management platform. Uh, so for instance, you know, let's say you want to send an email um, to everyone, or sorry, to the administrator um, of all devices that have been you know, jailbroken in the past seven days. That's something you can easily set up within this platform. Uh, it's uh, mail server agnostic, so that means you know, you're not required to run any type of um, you know, mail server or version of mail server. Um, there is some native integration with Exchange uh, 07 and 2010. Um, so if you want to manage your accessing policies that way, you can do that. Uh, but it's absolutely not required. Uh, this will work great with any mail server. Uh, we don't get in between the device and the mail server. We don't play that man in the middle role. So unified endpoint management, um, what that means is you have one place to manage all your devices, whether they're mobile or not. Uh, so that includes all your major mobile platforms, iOS, Android, you know, Windows Phone, Windows Mobile, uh, Blackberry, uh, and then also your major desktop OSs, you know, Windows uh, XP all the way up through Windows 8, Mac, and Linux as well. It's uh, highly scalable. Uh, so if you're, you know, if you're already an Altiris user, um, you can use your existing SMP server for this. Um, the same server can handle up to 20,000 mobile devices in addition to 20,000 computers. Uh, if you're on SCCM, uh, similar numbers, but a little bit more. Um, you can reuse your existing servers. If you have any automation, um, you know, using uh, semantic workflow, uh, this integrates well with that as well. Uh, so an example of that would be might be like a self-service portal, you know, and Self-service portal will be you know, useful for a BYOD situation. Um, you know, someone could log into a website, uh, they give their credentials, it looks up to see what devices they own, and you know, they could do like their own wipe, um, or they could have it check in, um, or something like that, or reset their own passcode. So being able to provide those self-service features uh, through workflow is something that we've done before, um, and works very well with this platform. So, you know, getting back um, to BYOD, there's a few different options we have and how, you know, how we want to approach this. Um, some of the other products out there, not necessarily Symantec, uh, they try to put everything uh, within the single container. You know, someone logs into and they have access to all their applications and documents. Uh, it doesn't really provide an integrated experience with the device they're on. Everything's just kind of separated off into its own sandbox. Um, the other option we have is, you know, protecting the device itself. So whether you're using mobile management and or mobile security, uh, this can apply to both, you know, corporate and personal devices. Uh, this is going to give you full control over the whole device itself. Um, native protection is referring to managing just the content and applications, and that's that application-centric view of how you want to protect your devices. Um, and I'll show you examples um, of both of these. So, you know, within BYOD, I mentioned earlier that you may not want to take control of the whole device and manage it through a typical MDM. So that's why Symantec has a product called App Center, uh, also called Nikona, uh, which allows you to take any in-house apps you've done, so anything that you've written or third-party developer has written, or it could be an HTML5 application, um, you know, like a web portal or something like that, and you can wrap it uh, using this technology. And what that means is you're able to apply security policies to the application without having um, any programming knowledge. So you don't need a software development kit. Uh, you don't need your developers you know, to interact with this. Uh, everything is done within this console. And so the advantage of that um, is that you know, as a mobile device administrator, you can go in, you can set the security policies for your content, for your applications, uh, without developing or writing any lines of code. You can change them on the fly. 
Um, you know, the settings are fairly dynamic, and everything is um, you know, essentially controlled without managing the whole device. All right. That said, I'm going to jump into the second half of the webinar, and we're going to um, go through the console, and I'll show you some devices of what it looks like from the end user perspective. Um, because when you're, you know, when you're dealing with BYOD, um, with bringing your own device, you want a very seamless, very easy to use environment um, for your users to get set up with. Otherwise, they're not going to want to use it, and it's going to be an uphill battle. So we're going to show you how we've implemented this in the past um, to be very easy to install and get registered. So I'm going to start with the console here. Uh, this is the management platform console. Uh, if you have SCCM, uh, it would look like you know your configuration manager, um, and everything would be integrated that way. So it looks slightly different, but all the functionality is basically the same. So from here, um, we have a dashboard of all the OSs on here. Uh, you can drill down into any of these. So if I want to see all the iOS devices, uh, from here you have your instant actions. Uh, so if you need to immediately, you know, lock a device or do a selective wipe, you know, remove just that corporate data you sent down. Uh, if you want to reset a passcode, have it check in, or do a full wipe, you can do any of these from here. Uh, if you're already familiar with the uh, management console, uh, if you're an Altiris user, you may be aware that you can uh, define your own menu actions. Uh, so, for instance, you know we know that we collect all sorts of data about the device. You know we collect GPS coordinates, application inventory, hardware inventory, um, you know, user information. Uh, so let's say we want to, you know, push those GPS coordinates into a Google Maps. Well, you can easily create your own, you know, what they call user-defined uh, console menus, and you can do like a right-click showing Google Maps, and then from there it will, uh, you know, pinpoint to exactly where the device is. And this works for um, for any you know type of mobile managed device on here. Uh, if you're on an Android device, uh, it's basically the same options. Uh, except you have the option of also setting the passcode uh, and not just uh, resetting it, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to jump into the uh, configuration. This is for iOS and Android. This is how you push out configurations uh, to your devices. So for instance, let's say you have you know Exchange or Lotus Notes, um, you know with the with the Traveler option, you can set up Active Sync through here. Uh, so this is for the iOS side. You'd specify all of your settings in here. Uh, you know whether you use SSL, your domain. If you have um, if you have this hooked up to Active Directory uh, from users enrolled devices, um, it will automatically populate their username uh, into the mail profile. So what that means is you can define you know the mail server here. You can define the domain. And the system will automatically populate the username for you. It will automatically populate the email address. So it's only prompting the user to enter in the password. So that's a big convenience for both the user and your help desk uh, to reduce those calls coming in. If you have uh, certificates, you can point this to a certificate as well uh, for stronger authentication to your mail provider. Uh, this is fully compatible with um, Office 365 out in the cloud. So it works great with that as well. If you have uh, passcode restrictions, you know, I mentioned earlier, you can specify the complexity, the length of the passcode, etc. Basically, anything that uh, iOS supports, um, you can have, you can get access to that configuration through here. Restrictions: If you want to really lock down a device, you can go through here and uh, you know basically just check off the features that you want enabled or disabled on the device. And this is within iOS. So if you want to disable iCloud. Now you can do that. If you want to, um, you know, require encryption for your backups, you can do that here. You can uh, prevent rated R movies from showing. Um, you can also enable what I call the anger management feature, uh, which is basically a profanity filter for Siri. I haven't actually seen that used in production yet, so I'd be interested to see what the user response is to that. If anyone notices. Uh, VPN is a big one. A lot of VPN settings uh, can be hard to remember, hard to type, you know, the addresses and uh, you know, certificates and all that. So you can configure anything that iOS supports in here for your VPN configuration and set it up all through here. 
Same goes for Wi-Fi. You can set up your Wi-Fi networks as well. And that's on the iOS side. So under Android, uh, we have some similar options here for passcode, you know, being able to set the length and you know complexity and that kind of thing. Uh, for the device options, um, Google hasn't really standardized much on this, but you can require encryption, um, you can disable the camera, and if it requires a certain level of Android, uh, it'll specify what version is required for that. And if you have uh, touchdown for the email client, um, which is, in my opinion, the best um, email client you can get for Exchange or ActiveSync on Android devices, you can configure that account here. It's basically the same settings as you saw on the iOS. So it'll take care of filling in your username and email address for you. Um, but with Touchdown, unlike with iOS, uh, you can really lock down um, you know, specific functionality within the email client. Uh, so for instance, if you want to disallow the storage card, you can do that here. Uh, you could require encryption of all the email attachments. Uh, you can <clears throat> prevent the user from reconfiguring these options. Uh, you can even disable third-party add-ons. Uh, you can uh, configure your attachments. You know, maybe you don't want people downloading attachments onto their storage card. Uh, you can disable that. Um, you can even prevent, or you can even uh, prevent people from copying contacts out of the phone book if you wanted to. Uh, it gets very granular. Uh, you can even configure the phone book fields. You know, what's available within the contacts. Uh, you can even configure signatures. So if you have a standard signature, you can do. This is really getting to the level of. Um, you know, of the BES with the BlackBerry Enterprise Server um, level of granularity you have in configuring all these options. If you have a touchdown license, you can provision that from here as well. And you can configure the calendar. And then within the user settings, uh, there's even more settings in here. Uh, so that, you know, I talked about removing attachments from the SD card. Um, you can even um, disable uh, copy and paste. Um, within uh, within email. Anyways, lots of options. You can configure the calendar view and all that. So, um, so if you're familiar with Touchdown, you can configure anything within that. So the mobile library, um, this is the other piece of the agent. Um, this is going to allow you to push down your documents and your applications uh, to the device. So if we open up any of these, you can see you can publish your own icon. You can give it your own description. Uh, you can specify you know, what platform it's for, um, whether it's an in-house app uh, or external, you know, commercial. It can be application, it could be a document. So that document could be a PDF, it could be a spreadsheet. Um, you can do media such as like videos and you know, images and that kind of thing. And you can have multiple feeds. A feed is basically a group of these items. So as I mentioned earlier, you could target you know, a group of devices to get one feed and another group to do to get a different feed. So I brought up my iPad here. Down here in our, uh, we have the mobile management agent, but it, uh, this is an in-house agent, so you can customize that icon if you wish. So I'm gonna open it up, and you can see this is kind of the about screen. Uh, you can configure you know, the phone number, um, website address, etc., for support. On the far left side here, uh, we have our apps. You know, so this is where you can publish whether they're internal or external apps. Uh, for people to download. Under uh, documents, this is where you know you can publish your PDF, Word files, spreadsheets, etc. Um, and when, once you download it, it caches it locally. And so that way if you don't have network access, you know, if you're on a plane or something, um, you can still have access to those documents that are cached. And if you do a selective wipe, it would immediately clear out that cache as well. Uh, so for instance, if I go down here, I can download this uh, file and you can see it immediately opens it here. And now it's uh, cached, so it'll just show the open button. Uh, under media, that's where you can publish uh, videos and images. And then updates will show you anything that's changed recently. So I'm gonna flip back to the console now. Actually, I'll show you real quick. Um, earlier on, I mentioned, you know, we have some uh, actions, you know, that we can do, um, such as, you know, doing a wipe or doing a lock screen or something like that. Um, unfortunately, I won't be demonstrating the wipe uh, today. Hopefully you understand. Uh, but I will show you, you know, like the lock device. Uh, you, when you send a command like this, it asks you, you know, to confirm if you're okay with doing it. And then once we hit okay over here, 
it'll send a command and then it'll lock over here. So it's pretty speedy. So we also talked about reports. You know, I, I mentioned that there's probably about 30 or so built-in reports, but you can also uh, customize your own. So for instance, if you wanted to see all the applications that are installed on the device, you can bring up one of these reports. Uh, you can search for a specific application or look up a specific device. Um, you know, so if you wanted to see maybe you know who has Dropbox installed, I can do a search here. And uh, you can see about uh, 10 of the devices have Dropbox installed. And uh, a lot of these uh, reports, you can do a drawdown. Um, that'll let you see which devices have the app installed. So if I drill down into this, it'll give us um, another piece of um, you know, managing the security on your devices is um, mobile security. Uh, this is right now specific to Android and Windows mobile devices, um, mostly because uh, they're the those platforms are the easiest to get applications installed on. Um, you know. That meaning, you know, their their app store isn't as strict as Apple's, so more things slip through. Um, I've seen some reports that, saying that about 10% of the applications on the uh, Android Play um, or on the Google Play are malware or, or contain some malware. Um, so within here, I know just like uh, device management, we have um, you know actions for device security. Uh, so if you wanted to you know, recover like a lost phone uh, or maybe it was stolen, you could turn on an, an alarm here, which is pretty neat. Um, you can lock the phone, set a new passcode, even show a message on the screen saying, you know, if this device is found, please contact so-and-so at your organization. Uh, or you could just have it wipe the entire device, uh, including everything on the SD card as well. You obviously want to be careful with that because um, SD cards typically contain a lot of user data. So if I wanted to, uh, let's just say, turn on the alarm here, and uh, we'll just make it go for one second, and we'll make it go twice. I can configure that here. And when I hit OK, it's going to send a command over to my, to my tablet and uh, having the alarm go off. So it's kind of a neat feature as well. Uh, but you could also you know, do other things like run a Run an AV scan, um, have it you know, update policies, uses live update to pull out that information. Uh, we have another webinar that covers more details and goes more in depth on the uh, mobile security uh, for Android. So if you're interested in that, check out our Vimeo.com page. I'm going to switch gears, about 15 minutes left, um, and switch over to the App Center. Um, this is a big part of BYOD um, because you know with the App Center, you're not managing or you don't have to manage the whole device. You can manage just the applications and the content um, contained within. So here's what this looks like. So this is the um, admin console. And from here, um, you have all of our applications. The, you might see a little semantic check mark on some of these. Uh, that means it's been wrapped. I'll explain what that means in a minute. Um, you can do you know, applications out in the store. It will automatically pull in, um, you know, the description and uh, screenshots. So down here, you can see the screenshots for Angry Birds in space. Um, you can, you know, everything is scoped, um, which means you can adjust the security for it. So, for instance, if you only wanted certain groups of people to see Angry Birds uh, space in HD, um, you could limit that to a specific AD group uh, or to a user group. And uh, if you're familiar with the um, Apple volume purchase plan uh, or volume purchase program, you can upload um, those keys. So if you wanted to, let's say, buy 50 licenses of uh, you know Angry Birds, you know, HD Premium or whatever, uh, Apple gives you a list of 50 registration keys. Um, you can upload that uh, into the App Center. You can enable what they call inventory management, and that will automatically manage uh, those keys for you. If it's a uh, in-house app, so let's say we have you know this expenses app down here, um, you can you know do your own inventory management. So if you want to restrict the number of people who can download this app, you can set that here. Uh, people can also rate and set reviews for the application. This is basically 
a very full featured enterprise app store. Um, when, you know, which does apps and documents as well. So you, people can submit reviews and ratings of the documents and apps. You can do that here. Um, there's also some security policies I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, this is where you would change the security policy for this application. So when you add an application, uh, there's four different places where it can come from. Uh, one place is you know, the native app. That's where you get that security policy. Um, you know, wrapping technology I described earlier. Uh, it could be, you know, for iOS or for Android, uh, or if you just want to do a, you know, a push to the application, um, you can upload the BlackBerry app as well. If you have a web application that you don't need secured, you just want to publish like a web clip or a shortcut to it, uh, you can do that here under this web app option. Uh, secure web app, that's going to give you a basically like a sandbox container uh, a browser that you apply your own security policies to. So this would be good for like an internet site, um, you know, or, or some other web application that you need to apply security policies to. And then finally, the external store app uh, is anything coming from you know the iTunes app store or from Google Play. So when you add those in there, it um, it basically sucks in all the information for you, uh, especially if it's coming from the external store. So app policies and content policies is really where the magic happens um, within that app center. So we can go down to our uh, copy, and tape, copy and paste test policy here. And these are all the options that get applied uh, to any apps that you've, you know, that, are, that have been developed in-house or you had someone develop for you. Um, you know, so for instance, let's say you had someone develop an app. It's great, but it contains some sensitive information. And that developer, um, you know, to either save time or money, uh, or they didn't have the skill set. You know, they don't require you know, any authentication on the app. So you need to be able to lock down, you know, this application or this document. So you can enable user authentication, and that would go back against you know your Active Directory or LDAP or SAML or whatever you want on the back end, and require authentication for that app to be accessed. You can also define a timeout. You know, how often they need to reauthenticate. Uh, since they use the application, um, if they're if they don't have a network, you know, don't have network access, and they're on a plane, um, you may want to enable offline authentication. That allows the user to set up a PIN uh, so they can access it uh, while being offline. Uh, if they've entered in the wrong password too many times, uh, you could have the app clear out all of its data stored internally and disable it from opening. So it's kind of a fail-safe mechanism uh, against people trying to, you know, use, uh, you know, crack the password or try to get access to the app that way. If you need to require encryption, um, but the application doesn't support it natively, um, or if you want a stronger version of the encryption that the app supports, you can use um, the Nikona App Center encryption. Uh, part of the private key is actually stored up on the server, so not everything's on the device. Uh, a lot of applications on, especially on iOS, when they say they support encryption, uh, they're just using the built-in, you know, uh, iOS encryption that comes, you know, the key uh, comes with the device or gets generated in iTunes. Uh, so this provides a more secure way um, of using, um, you know, encryption on the device with certificates. You can also uh, have it just clear out all the data as soon as the app is closed. Uh, if you're on Android, you can. Um, enable or disable uh, the storage of the data on SD cards as well. So probably the more popular features uh, within this is blocking inter-app document sharing. What that means is that little open in button when you get when you open documents, uh, preventing people from uploading your documents to uh, Dropbox or to Goodreader, uh, you know, Facebook or whatever, um, you can disable you know that button up there. You can even uh, block copy and paste as well. I'll show you what that looks like. If the device has been compromised, so if it's been jailbroken and rooted, you can have it automatically clear out the data within that app. You can also block uh, file sharing with iTunes and iCloud. Uh, you can have the app check in for updates. So if you you know change the security policy or you publish a new version of the app, um, you can have it check in on the interval that you specify. Uh, you can even set you know what they call like a time bomb. So if the app can't contact the server, you know if the device has been offline. Um, and that could be considered not in compliance if it's not connecting back to your server. 
So you could have it automatically destroy the data and clear out all the uh, content within that app. Uh, if you want to force an upgrade of a new version of that app, you can specify uh, the grace period there, um, you know, for how long they have to upgrade. So interesting fact about all these security options I just went through is that everything is contained within the app. So there's no separate, you know, app container where someone has to get into to then get access to their apps. Everything is blended in with all their other apps. So all these security policies are defined within the app themselves. So there's nothing that the user can just remove, you know, to then get access to this application. Everything is baked into the app, and it's all done dynamically. You don't need a development kit. You don't need a developer to go in and program any features. Everything is done on the server side. Um, so on content, this is where you publish documents. Um, it supports versioning, the same as applications. So if you want to publish multiple versions, you can do that. Uh, you can specify categories. You can even specify when the uh, content should expire. Uh, which can be fairly useful for dynamic content. Again, you have the same security permissions that you can uh, change here. Content policy is going to look very similar um, to your uh, application policies. You, know, you can require encryption, you can allow offline access, you can um, prevent sharing you know, with other apps, uh, you can have a check in for updates, etc. I'm going to uh, switch over. We only have a few minutes left. But I want to show you, um, you know, what, what this all means here. So, it's on my device. If I open up the uh, ITS apps, there it is, up here. It's going to ask me to authenticate because I haven't used it in more than 30 minutes. So once it authenticates, it'll give me access back to our uh, our enterprise app center. If I go to our top apps, you know, I mentioned people can do reviews and you know they can comment on things. Uh, so if I go into the expenses app here. Uh, you can see it's already installed. Uh, I could add a review and save that. You can even run reports on these uh, reviews, things like that. Um, so if I go back here, you can see all of our apps. Um, you can also search for apps if you want to. I can flip over to the content view. This is going to show me all of my uh, documents, uh, anything that I publish up on here. Um, you can also request permission to access you know, apps and documents. So I mentioned um, being able to lock down, you know, the security for certain apps. Um, so I requested this, you know, this PDF from the administrator. Um, they denied approval. You can see that up here. But I can request that again. Sorry, my screen got flipped around there. Um, anyways, and you can see it's pending approval. It will notify the administrator. Uh, to you know, if you can install the app or not. So I already have the expenses app installed. Uh, so I'm going to open that up here, and it's going to ask me to authenticate because uh, we have a security policy telling me, um, uh, saying that we need to authenticate if we haven't used the app in 30 minutes. So we're going to log in here. Uh, successfully logged in. So you can see we have. Uh, you know this expense report here, we can approve or you know reject here. Uh, there's also an attachment attached here. Uh, so you see this is just like a document that's embedded as part of this application. Uh, if I try to open it in another app, I'm going to get a you know a dialog saying that the administrator is restricted um, this document from being opened. Or I could try to copy and paste information out. So let's say I want to take all this you know proprietary information and email to someone to copy it out. Uh, it's going to give me an error saying that you know it's been uh, blocked by the app policy. Again, this is all within um, the application itself. Um, so you can manage both the documents and the applications. Um, with, and this doesn't require any MDM to be installed on the device because we're focusing, again, just on the content applications. Uh, so the App Center is um, a very popular and very useful tool uh, for BYOD strategies. So I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank you all for attending. I hope you found this valuable. Um, we have other mobile webcasts up on the Vimeo site, vimeo.com slash ITS partners. So again, thank you all for coming and hope you have a great week.